here, the Tennessee Titans, as we see them here on WEEI Afternoons. As we always do, we'll start with what happened last week with this team. The Titans got bludgeoned last Sunday. <laughs> like, really, one of the biggest ass kickings of this season, which we're about halfway through, happened to the Titans at the hands of the Detroit Lions. They beat them 52 to 14. This was a weird game because Jameer Gibbs went crazy at 127 yards, 11 yards per carry. Jared Goff only threw for 85 yards, had three touchdowns, and at one point in the third quarter, had more points than passing yards. Really? Yeah. And wasn't he like 8 of 11 or something with yes. three touchdowns? Something? It was very, it was a ton of turnovers, tons of short fields. Uh, the Lions were 5 for 5 in the red zone. They forced four turnovers, two interceptions, three fumbles. Two of them got lost. There was a punt return for a touchdown. They basically dominated Tennessee all three ways. There was a trick play. Detroit's doing trick plays every week. Uh, I they like had, that about uh, them. Who was it? Not It wasn't Gibbs. It was the other running back threw a pass. Uh Montgomery, David Montgomery was yep. the one he threw a pass. Uh, Ridley had a good game for Tennessee, 10 catches, 143 yards. But that's it. That was Tennessee's third straight loss. Their only win this year is against uh, Snoop Huntley and Miami. In the league, they rank on offense 30th in yards per game, 281.6. Know where the Patriots rank? 31st. 32nd. Worst in the league. Like the Lions have one of the worst offenses in football? No, Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee Titans. Sorry, I was hooked on the Lions for a minute there. That's okay. The Lions have a very good uh, very good offense. That's what I thought. The Tennessee Titans do not. They're 30th in yards per game. Patriots are 32nd in points per game. Tennessee's 28th, 17.1 points per game. Patriots are 30th at 15.5. Despite, you know, exciting Drake May or whatever, they're still not scoring a ton of points. On defense, this is weird. On defense, the Tennessee Titans are first in the NFL in yards allowed per game. They only allow 265.4 yards per game. That's the best mark in the entire league. The Patriots are 23rd. They've given up they give up 356 yards per game. But the Titans are number 1. Points per game though, they're tied for 30th. They give up 28 points per game on 265 yards. Isn't that wild? Think like, about how efficient all these other offenses are against them. Well, they, they some of get, that is Will Levis giving the other team the ball on like the that's 10 every time. Huge or the 20 part of or whatever. The turnovers are a huge, huge part of that. But to be first in the whole league in yards against and 28th in points against, that's crazy. Or 30th in points against, I should say, is a wild discrepancy. The Patriots, by the way, 21st in points against the 24.6. It was a big offseason for the Tennessee Titans. They made a ton of moves. They signed Calvin Ridley. They traded a third-round pick for Legereus Sneed, then signed him to a four-year deal. They signed Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, who I really liked coming out of school, who I think got drafted by the Chargers, I want to say. With the Patriots pick. Patriots With the Patriots the pick. Exactly right. I wanted Murray, and they uh, traded that one away. That was the Kyle Duggar draft, I think. Sounds right. Right? Yep. Something like that. Uh, they also signed Tyler Boyd, pretty good third receiver. Signed Tony Pollard. Signed Lloyd Cushenberry to be their center. Signed Quandre Diggs at safety. A lot of signings, a lot of trades. A lot of turnover here for this team. Uh, they also let Derrick Henry walk. They fired Mike Vrabel, and they stuck with Will Levis, which were some of the drama that they had in the offseason. A lot of people wanted him to go quarterback. A lot of people liked Vrabel, and a lot of people didn't want to see Derrick Henry walk out the door, despite the fact that Tennessee had been kind of reeling in the last couple of years. They decided to start over, and in the draft, they took J.C. Latham, seventh overall, tackle out of Alabama. He's now their starting left tackle, uh, the number two prospect, I'd say, behind Joe Alt on every draft board. Mm. Uh, at 38th overall, they drafted Tavondre Sweat, nose tackle out of Texas. He's starting for him, and they drafted a starting defensive back in Jarvis Brownlee, but that's because one of their guys is injured, and uh, now I forget who it is, but uh, that that's the reason for that. I know. This is a very uh, in-depth scouting report here. <laughs> uh, players to watch. Who are your players to watch, Andy Hart? Uh, the quarterback, I would say. Uh, Mason Rudolph. Mm -hmm. And regardless of who plays quarterback for the Patriots, uh, Mason Rudolph. I remember when he took over for Will Levis and he had a sneaky winning record. People were selling. I was watching the game and they're like, you know, he's like 8-4 and four in Pittsburgh or right. something like that. He's not very good. Um, so I was looking at his numbers. Where am I? I'm not even on the right thing. How did I get on the Lions again? I don't know. Me. You're obsessed with the Lions today. Well, I am kind of obsessed with the Lions in general. But Mason Rudolph has three interceptions, two touchdowns, which nothing to write home about, but a 69.9 rating, which is nice for certain things. Um, very nice. Calvin Ridley, to me, is the other player to watch because of you people. 
the you people that wanted him. Mm -hmm. And he was actually having a terrible year until last week where he had like 12 catches for 140 yards. Remember, he was bitching. They get rid of DeAndre Hopkins. Then he finally gets all the targets. So I don't think he was having a terrible year. He's got 22 catches, and more than half of them came last week. Yeah, but there's only been how many games? Like, he's had a couple other pretty good games, I think. What do you mean how many games there? there Let me go back over and find it. Seven games, 11 catches in seven games. I know he's had at least one other uh, very good game. I can't pull up his... uh... He's got one touchdown for the year. One. Solamente un. He'd fit right in on the Patriots. He's a one-touchdown receiver. Sure he would. Uh, but he's had other good games this year is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, against the Jets, four catches, 77 yards in the touchdown. Uh, he had three catches for 50 yards in the first game. I mean, nothing, nothing. For a hundred million dollars, you get three catches and you get excited about it. You call that a good game? He also uh, has rushed for some yards as well. Good yards from scrimmage here. All right, get off Calvin Ridley. Fine. <laughs> gross uh either way he's better than anything you have that's for sure uh that's true. other players to watch you heard um, mayo talked him up right uh you yeah know, zero really getting a lot of targets ridley we can see why everybody wanted him on their team or something he's a prize mm-hmm. free agent this offseason uh another guy to watch nick westbrook akine he has five catches and three touchdowns so the guy to watch out for in the red zone that's good production that's very good production pharaoh brown-esque uh jeffrey simmons uh their uh, uh, edge stud. rusher is a stud uh i think Getting ridley's pretty older, good right though uh, yeah, I'd say so, right? I feel like he's, he's been there forever. Late 20s, maybe early 30s. And uh, their kicker, Nick Folk, who's a good old friend, accurate, reliable guy, uh, who's been making kicks for them. And really, that's about all that they have going for him right now. Former Jags, uh, excuse me, former Jags, former Titans and Patriots. Uh, Nick Folk's one of them. The other's Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper played for Tennessee, which brings us to everybody's favorite part of the scouting report. Yes. And that is the all-time Patriots-Titans team. Who do you think starting a quarterback on the all-time Patriots Titans team? All-time Patriots Titans team. Should I know this? You should. Okay, tell me. Matt Castle. Oh yeah, Matt, Matt Castle. Castle. There's your starting quarterback. I don't think of him as a Tennessee Titan. He was only there briefly, but he yeah. did he did play there. Uh running back, you got a pretty good mix here. Marion Butts, uh Deion, Deion Lewis, Lewis, Deion Lewis and Antoine Smith. Who I don't remember being uh, with Tennessee, or maybe it was Houston back then. Uh, but uh, he was also a part of those teams. You got a loaded tight end room here. Listen to this: Algie Crumpler, Daniel Graham, Austin Hooper, and Jonu Smith. Uh, pretty good tight end tight play end right room. there. That's a pretty good tight end room. Uh, a wide receiver, number one, Randy Moss, of course. <laughs> of course, David Givens. David Givens was a sad story. I love David Givens. He went there on a decent money deal, and then he mm-hmm. hurt his knee, and it, like, petered was out it. fast. Yeah, and he was a stud for the Patriots. He was. He might be the most underrated player of the early dynasty. I would agree. Seventh-round pick or whatever he was. Yep. He was uh, and he, he was caught a, a touchdown story. in, like, eight straight postseason games or mm-hmm. something. Stud. Yeah, Givens was awesome. Uh, Josh Gordon. And Kenny Britt also round out that room. Receiver room, not bad when healthy. Not bad. A couple of head cases in there, but not a bad room, uh, to be sure. Yeah, but if you took the best of that room... You have Randy Moss and Josh mm-hmm. Gordon on the same team. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. Uh, your offensive line's not great. Marshall Newhouse is your starting tackle. Tom Funches, Kevin Hunt, and Josh Klein. Not a lot of names I'm even all that familiar with. And then on defense, uh, Malcolm Butler, of course. Of course. Albert Hainsworth, who was awesome in Tennessee and then was a total joke here. Uh, and Akeem Ayers, the linebacker. What about Logan Ryan? Akeem. And Logan Ryan. There's a good one, too. I didn't even think of him. Yeah, Jeez. Logan Ryan. Uh, Anybody who? else? Uh, you remember dancing into the end zone in Tom Brady's last yeah. ever game as a Patriot. Last pass he ever threw as a Patriot went right into the waiting Al- arms of Logan Ryan. What did Albert Hainsworth do there? I forget like exactly where some of his with transgressions Tennessee? happened. No, I mean in terms of bad stuff. I think that's where he had that thing with the waitress. Where he, at with a the, strip club where he asked her, where, whatever, I, yeah. where do I swipe this ma'am or something? I believe like he, that was when he was with the Titans. I'm yeah. not sure. Let me that see may have I been. Can, uh, Get yeah, arrest tracker. warrants were issued against Hainsworth in two Tennessee counties in two, 2006. One was stemming from a traffic incident on Interstate 40. Both sets of charges were dropped. Uh, let's see. He was Did driving he 100 miles an hour. Too? Yeah, he stomped on a guy's head. Uh, that guy in the Cowboys, I remember that. Yeah. Um, it was reported that uh, Clayton Bank and Trust was suing Hainsworth in 2010, alleging that he failed to make payments on a loan in the amount of $2.38 million. Jeez. A uh, stripper from New York claimed a $10 million lawsuit that Hainsworth impregnated her and left her with no financial assistance. Hainsworth allegedly in 2011 threw a punch to the nose of Joel Velasquez of Leesburg, Virginia, during a traffic altercation. 2015, pled guilty to reckless boating. 2020, arrested in Cleveland, Tennessee, charged with domestic assault after he was accused of yelling at and threatening his former girlfriend and her new boyfriend. Oh, nice. 
Okay. He was good in Tennessee. He was good with the Redskins, too, I want to say, right? I Isn't believe. that where he started his career, I want to say? Yes. So. That's, yeah, he got a $100 million deal there, though, right? Yeah. He was a $100 million guy. Yeah, he was. And he wasn't making payments on $2 million loans? What and last doing? I heard in Worcester, he had, like, a cab company or something, or, like, a limo company. Worcester, Massachusetts. In Worcester, Massachusetts. He's yeah. still here? I don't know if he's still here now, but I know that after he was done playing, really? he was part he of... settled some... in Worcester? Yeah, I th- or we had a business there or something. Oh. I, I think I'm right about that. I'll go back and make sure I'm not talking completely out of my mind here, but I think it was huh. in Western Mass, somewhere in Western Mass or something like that. He had a uh, either a limo company or a cab company or something along those lines. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's the last I heard of Albert Hainsworth. Anyway, there you go. That is your... Who's got the better coach? Tennessee Titans scouting report. Good question. Brian Callahan or Gerard Mayo, who is the better coach? I'm going to lean. I'm going to lean Callahan just because he's an offensive mind, and I think that that's a little bit more valuable in 2024 than whatever it is that Gerard Mayo is bringing to the table. I would say he's not obviously not off to a great start here or anything, but I think in terms of what uh, makes for a good coach or a good play caller or whatever it is, I'd lean on that side of things. I'd lean on the offensive side where Callahan is. Yeah, I'm not even totally... if he doesn't end up being good. That's where I. That's where I go. He, I think, has had uh, more, even more um, glaring or bombastic mistakes as a first. That that what the f are you doing? Yeah. And then talking about it in the press conference, and he's had. Did some, he call him soft though? <laughs> uh, sort of, basically. Uh, he's had some rookie coach moments there in the media, on the field, with his team. I would. I think they're very similar in that they're learning quickly on the fly here. And he probably should have been better prepared Mm -hmm. based on being the son of a football coach all his life and then being second in charge for a, you know, a big time offense with Joe Burrow and T Higgins and and Jamar Chase. Like he, I feel like he should have been more ready for the role he's in. Yeah. 